All cultures start in Africa. We see the Shinto Sun Gate represented on the necklace of the Samuel Bear on the Narmer Palette 3200 BCE. We see a connection between the Shu region uh, in Asia, in China, I believe, and Shu, uh, the deity of the atmosphere, became a deity of light, etc., and of emptiness, right? Karate, empty hands. So to understand one's culture and their cultural memory, you have to go back to the source, no matter how you slice it. And of course, when it comes to civilization being effectively uh, ordered, we must look to Egypt. The Greeks themselves credit Egypt with their culture. And they talk about Dorian invasions from the north. They say the Dorian invasions destroyed their culture, while the Greeks enriched it and were basically the foundation in which it was built on. And of course, they had grain. The grain became a major way for them to supplement their, their growing population. And of course, the Romans themselves would rely on Egyptian grain, not just their own supplies, to supply their army for their military campaigns. Diet and deity. Diet and exercise. War and martial arts. So let's go back to the... Well, first, I'll make this the first video. This is actually going to be May 3rd, but... I'm going to talk about cultural memory in the next two videos I've already made before this one. I'm going to talk about honing the senses and inscribing and incorporating um, Lamarck's, uh, Lamarck's law, uh, an individual's a summation of the whole history that preceded him or her. I'm going to talk about very good stuff in the next two parts. I, I strongly suggest. I'll, I'll be very sad if you don't watch those videos. So the tall men are less likely to feel jealous and more likely to be reelected. Now, am I saying this because, you know, I come from a family of guys who are seven, nine, and we're like, man, fuck you midgets every day, you know, at the dinner table. Man, fuck these mini-me's. <laughs> no. My grandfathers, both my grandfathers were below or under six feet. Um, uh, my, my, my dad's two brothers, one of them uh, is under six feet, the other one passed away, and he was big and uh, big and strong. Okay, big and strong. So one of them was big and strong, one of them was short and kind of, you know, average kind of physique, I guess. And my dad is tall, 6'4", and he's a big, strong guy. My mom is a pretty thick woman, okay? And she's about probably 5'7 or so, okay? So these are the facts. I have these things in my DNA. If I had a child, that might very well be 5'7 or so. That's fine with me, okay? I'd rather them be more like me, but that's fine with me. Moving on, so tall men less likely to feel jealous, more likely to be reelected as, pre as presidents, right? This has to do with leadership. We talk about teammate, shipmate, roommate, right? Inmate, and we talk about shipping uh, and receiving, mating, and I've gone over these things time and time again. Sponsorship, uh, township, okay? The leadership is probably the bell that rings the loudest when it comes to mating and shipping and birthing a ship and seamen and so on. Okay, and the see and how you see things. According to psychology today, people are taller because of hormonal influences. And these things are expressed, certainly we see in sports, right? Lean muscle mass and testosterone. So we see, we would expect, obviously black people on average have maybe 15% more testosterone, level, higher testosterone levels than white people. So the tall black person tends to be more coordinated uh, historically, the, and have more testosterone, but they're being bred away. They're being bred away, right? It goes back to the bread of heaven and bread, and there's a connection there. Anyway, uh, so a lot of a lot of people don't know that kids um, are given risky hormonal tr uh, treatments, so that they can their parents can try to make them taller. I didn't really know this until you know I, I knew that some stuff like this was going on. I didn't really realize it was that common and popular and commonly understood that, you know, parents are giving their kids hormonal treatments, okay? And certainly this is why we see some, you know, uh, 
it makes you wonder about the people who adopt kids and uh, how much they really value them. Are you adopting them to experiment on them, for example? And, and you know, there's a lot of things, you know, gays and so on. Are they giving them hormones so that to make them gender neutral, to create a gender neutral society? Is this part of why they want to break down the family structure? Are white supremacists giving their kids hormones so they can outperform minorities in sports? I mean, we can go on and on and on. You know, are house niggas giving their kids hormones so they can make themselves seem like greater warriors and say, hey, you know, see my kid? Yep, yep. He gets that from his dad, you know? And so on and so forth, right? Are people just basically acting like bitches because they're bitches, in other words? Anyway, <clears throat> I think it's rather unfortunate that these things occur. Again, I'd like to point out that um, it was a small, what looks like a Jewish woman, and she's white or Jewish, okay, who pointed out that it is almost laughable to assume that being tall alone, okay, gives someone the advantage when it comes to hunting. Him, Nimrod was a, a mighty one before the Lord, a mighty hunter before the Lord, right? These things are understood in the stories of old, okay? Being tall alone does not make that person a mighty warrior, you know? He's, he can be a doot to doot motherfucker walking around unaware and out of touch, right? It is that focus. It is that intelligence, right? Wit tin to know, wit. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, I outwit them and I outhit them, quote. Okay, it is coordination. Of course, he was a martial artist and not just a boxer. Some people consider him the greatest boxer in history and he was a martial artist, a black martial artist, though he did not do African martial arts. But martial arts did help him with his cultural memory. Martial arts can help black people remember African martial arts to look around and see these things, to read these articles and say, hey, I'm starting to understand why I'm better than these other guys at martial arts, whoever they may be, house niggas or otherwise. Africans are the most diverse people. The most diverse. We all aren't tall, athletic people holding hands, singing kumbaya. Africans have committed genocide on each other based on these differences and politics. Africans started having um, wrestling competitions to reduce the bloodshed. Uh, incidentally, you know, the European body type is more conducive than perhaps most uh, when it comes to wrestling because of the cold and the thicker build. The different ways these thicker builds come into being and how they can be applied. When we look at this thing, it is rather unfortunate. It is sad. Going back to people who, uh, tall men are less likely to feel jealous. We look at how society is constructed and made and the media and the propaganda. Even that, that female who could have been a wonderful person who wrote, the, who wrote the article. Could have meant well. Certainly how this article will be used is to justify blurring the line between men, between races, between genders, between religions. There isn't a place where the line isn't being blurred. It is the corporate model, right? Mass production, mass consumption, reproduction. They want to create a society where the elite's families have populated the world. There's some variation, no doubt, but there isn't significant variation. People are about the same height. They're about the same skin tone, kind of like Egypt. This is what's going on here. These are the people who are winning in this thing. You know, white people ultimately on the right will decide that they don't want to be left behind and they will adjust accordingly. That is what I predict. And it, it is something that has come from me analyzing nature and politics and basically it's what these people have been saying themselves, which also has to do with nature. So, you know, it isn't some, some kind of direct message from God speaking to me as such, but certainly God has been communicating to me through villains, uh, nature, uh, and heroes alike. So I'll leave it there. You know, I think it's very important for us to look at this, this tall thing. What does it mean? You know, again, I'm not the tallest person. You know, there are people over a foot taller than me. There, there's someone somewhere, somehow, someone damn near a foot and a half taller than I am. Okay. But, like I always say, it is a combination. DNA backwards is and. 
It is a combination of things that makes us who we are. When you're born white, it doesn't automatically mean you're shallow. You have to face your obstacles. If you accept this culture that is being promoted as part of white supremacy, you will be shallow. You say, I'm white and I'm going to cheat people. I'm going to embrace the ill-gotten gains. I'm going to refuse to concede the righteous people's points, you know, the righteous individual's points. Then you'll become shallow. If you're black and you start to say, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm African and nobody else is, you'll start to drift towards shallow and mainstream conformity. You're helping them blur the line. You have to look for these individual qualities, these combination of things. Well, as I, I'll end it with what I always say in my videos when I make my martial arts argument. My martial arts argument is based on these five things that are basically variations of the same thing. Transferable, translatable, communicable, convertible, and universal skills. What do these skills, how do you translate, right? I'm translating in terms of cultural memory. I am the main point that you must look for. I have connected to it better than everyone else, mind, body, and soul. I am the spokesman for God. I translate for you. Let me translate because I am the main translator. Let me transfer for you. Let me convey, right? Communicate for you. Let me convert the truths of old into modern speech. Let me communicate it to you. And these, let me speak on behalf of God through the universe, right? What is the universe saying? No, what is God saying to you through the universe and beyond? Thank you.